This is Helena at Large. I'm Helena Strauss. And this video is about ONJ. No, no, not that one. This one. Osteonecrosis of the jaw, also known as ONJ or MRONJ, medication related osteonecrosis of the jaw, is a disease that was identified around 2002 and came about with the use of bone building bisphosphonates and rank gel inhibitors. MRONJ occurs when a portion of the jawbone begins to starve from a lack of blood and dies. Your body then works to remove the dead bone by pushing it out. As a result, you develop exposed bone and potentially other symptoms such as pain and infection. If you have ONJ, you should know that the strategies for the management of MRONJ were only first put forth in 2007 and staging for the disease was only introduced in 2009. So think of it this way for a moment. You are on the cutting edge of medicine, but being on the cutting edge also means you may have to search for a knowledgeable practitioner and likely will want a dentist call an orthognathic and maxillofacial surgeon on your team. Fortunately, orthognathic and maxillofacial surgeons are often part of medical insurance plans, possibly making necessary treatment more affordable but check with your insurance plan to confirm. In terms of your risk of developing MRONJ, there is currently no solid way to predict its development, but every patient who has been treated with bone building meds, whether IV or orally, and whether it's for cancer, osteoporosis, osteopenia, or the like, is at some increased risk. This is because bone building meds, properly known as anti-resorptive medications, have an outsized effect on jaw bones. Jawbone naturally remodels at a faster rate than all the other bones in our body. Also making this area vulnerable is the fact that the vascularity of the gums, which supplies blood to the tissue surrounding that jawbone, is not as robust as in other areas of our bodies. Your overall risk of developing MRONJ with the use of bone building drugs is in the single digits, but there are a few things of which to be aware that are associated with increased risk. Number one, dental extraction, invasive dental work, or other trauma. To mitigate this risk, you will likely be sent to a dentist to get necessary dental work done before you start taking anti-resorptive meds. Number two, steroid use. Steroids delay wound healing as well as suppress immunity and are considered factors in developing MRONJ. Number three, wearing dentures. Wearing dentures increases the potential for trauma to the mouth. Number four, the amount of time you are on anti-resorptive medications. The longer you are on bone building medications, the higher your risk. Number five, inflammation or infection. Both animal and human studies suggest that an anti-resorptive medication coupled with inflammation or infection is necessary and sufficient to induce MRONJ without other risk factors. And lastly, number six, Patients with multiple myeloma have the highest increased risk at around 5%, which is also greater if using a rank L inhibitor instead of a bisphosphonate. I am a case in point for this last risk, as I have multiple myeloma and developed ONJ after just a few doses of a rank L inhibitor. ONJ can sound very scary, but the most helpful thing to do when you are on bone building meds is to look out for any new symptoms in your mouth, such as pain, numbness, or sore areas. Also, coordinate your medical team and make sure your dentist knows you are on bone building meds and that you have regular dental care throughout your course of treatment and afterwards. You know what your mouth normally feels like, so if you have any new symptoms, get to an oral surgeon who knows ONJ for an examination.